A master has failed more times than a novice has even tried. So if you're afraid to fail and that's why you're not pursuing your goals and achieving them, just remember that failure is actually a success. It is part of your growth process. It is part of you changing and getting there. You're not just gonna jump from being at this point and then all of a sudden you're all the way up here. It's a process and you're gonna stumble and fall along the way down. I mean along the way up. You're gonna stumble and fall down on your way up. That's just part of it. It's okay. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome out, thanks for making it out to another installment of Thank You Universe. So I hope everyone is doing well, having a great day, uh, wherever you're at, enjoying this video on YouTube. Alright, so let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about your goals and why you haven't been achieving them reason you haven't been achieving your goals. So, a lot of people have goals, they have ideas, they have things that they think they want to do or that they do want to do or they say they want to do and they don't achieve those goals. So what is it that is stopping us from achieving our goals? Well, first off, one big reason is you don't have the right goals or you don't have the right goals for you. So. We all hear this example, I'm going to say it, but when you go and you become a doctor or a lawyer because your parents wanted you to. So people pursue goals not for themselves, but because they think they have to, because they want to impress other people. So some people want a whole bunch of money, and so they achieve, uh, pursue a business uh, degree or, you know, they try and get into banking or something boring like that. <laughs> um, just kidding. If you're into money and banks, that's cool, I guess. But the idea I'm trying to express is that people are pursuing goals for the wrong reasons. So if you're trying to do something to impress somebody, like maybe you want to you had an experience as a kid and your crush thought that um, mountain climbers were the coolest people in the world so you're like I'm gonna be a mountain climber and then people will love me so you go on this path and you become a mountain climber and you get better at it maybe you don't maybe you fall off a mountain <laughs> but it's not your passion and then eventually you don't pursue it with your full energy and your full purpose of soul because it's not really what you want to be doing. So maybe you become a teacher because uh, as a child your teacher told you, hey, you'd be a great teacher like me and you like your teacher and you say, you know what, I do want to be a teacher. That's what I'm meant to do because someone else told me. No, it doesn't work like that. You will know what you want to do because you will feel the passion and the fire burning inside. You will want to do it almost all the time. Uh, a caveat I would say is that in art, uh, which could be anything really, uh, there's a little bit of burnout when you're forced to produce to make ends meet for money or because it's part of your job. So. That part isn't passionate about, but the things that you love doing when there is no outside force trying to make you produce. It's the thing that you love, that you want to do all the time. So if you just listen to your gut and your intuition, self-reflect. You will know what that is, and you will pursue your goals. And you will begin to achieve them because when we move towards our highest goals in life, the universe actually works with us. It responds to us. It says, okay, this little conscious being, this individual, is actually doing what is in their best interest and the best interest of the universe and the all in this experience. So 
we're going to send them the experiences that they need in order to become the best version of themselves. So when you pursue your highest goal, the universe will work with you. Another reason that we don't achieve our goals is because we are afraid to fail. And we have this fear of failure such that we don't even try. So the example that I think of is PE in middle school growing up when people are forced to play sports that they don't even want to play and let's say they're playing basketball so someone like they think they suck already because they've never done it and they try to shoot a basket in basketball but they don't really try they're just kind of like eh. so they don't really try because when you really try then you will see where you're at whereas if you already say oh well I'm gonna choose to be bad at this and fail so then I won't even have to see what it is that I am able and capable of performing. So a lot of people are actually really afraid to actually try to do what it is that they want to do. Maybe you have a dream and it's some crazy outlandish dream that could never be supported and you might as well get a real job, kid. Like maybe you want to be a singer, maybe you want to be a YouTuber, maybe you want to be an actor. Maybe you want to be a musician and work for a record company. Maybe you want to be the world's greatest dancer, you know? You have these dreams that everyone tells you is outlandish. It's kind of funny how society does that when you're a child. It's a society's like, you can be anything you want. You could be the flipping president if you want. <laughs> but then when you grow up, they're like, get a real job kid that's not realistic so it's like we have this dichotomy of telling kids they can do whatever they want but then when you grow up it's like no that's not realistic you can't do that get a job that's boring and will sustain your life that you can work at and be a cog in the machine until you die so uh, that was just a little bit of a tangent but people don't actually want to pursue their dreams because maybe they've been discouraged by family or societal influences and so they're afraid to try. And they don't want to see what they're actually capable of because they're afraid they will fail because they are told they were, will fail. And if you believe what people tell you and you believe in those outside influences that say you will fail, you'll fail because you believe you will. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's the law of attraction. If you have a strong belief that you're going to meet difficulty and failure when you pursue your goals, then that's exactly what's going to come to you. So you have to remember, law of attraction, visualize your goals, believe and really feel the feeling of what would it be like to actually pursue my goals? What would it feel like to achieve these goals? What would it feel like when I'm finally that artist, when I'm finally that business person, when I'm finally that cook in a five-star restaurant, and believe that you can make it so that you can manifest it. So instead of not trying and not even seeing where you are at, believe that you can make it. Believe that it's already there in your future, and you just have to ride the ride of your existence and take the steps to become who you want to be. And it's not simply law of attraction, thinking about it, you'll manifest it. You actually have to take action. We live in a physical reality, even though reality is psychophysical, like um, in the principles of Hermeticism, everything is mental. But in the part of reality that we're experiencing with our 3D bodies, I know I just went really weird there for a second, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. In our 3D bodies, we need to take action because action is the language of this particular aspect of reality. You need to take action on it so that the universe can witness it and see, okay, they're actually pursuing what they want, let's make it happen. So believe that you can make it happen and take action on it.
And um, here is one of the biggest blocks to why you can't achieve your goals. It's a fun little word that you might have heard in your biology class when learning about organisms. It's called homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? It is staying in your center. It is regulating at the same spot. And human beings are animals and we have to maintain homeostasis of temperature, of how much nutrition we're getting, of a lot of things. And the body and the mind want to do what is as comfortable and easy as possible because by one perspective that is the most effective way. So when we try to make a change in our lives, we're going to meet with the resistance of the body and the mind. So maybe you want to start going to the gym and your body is like, no, I'm too weak, I'm too tired, I'm too sore, and then your mind works with the body and it's like, yeah, let's create this psychosomatic experience and believe that we can't go to the gym and we can't be consistent. And so we start feeling like we're weak or we're tired or maybe we get sick and then we don't go to the gym and we use it as an excuse and we go back to what is easy, what has worked in the past, our homeostasis of not um, going to the gym or exercising. I, exercising in general, I say going to the gym, but I don't like going to the gym. I like exercising, but if you like going to the gym, that's cool. And so with homeostasis, the body basically does not want to change. The mind does not want to change. It doesn't want to do things differently because it's actually adaptive in a way. What has been successful in the past has kept us alive so far. So we're like, hey, that works. Let's keep doing it. But that's not the way to self-actualize and that's not the way to become a better version of yourself and improve. That's the way to stay the same. So we have these regulatory systems in place that keep us at our center of where we're at. And we actually have to use a little force of will, a little work to push our center into something that is a higher aspiration. So maybe you're doing pretty well and you're doing things different for a while, maybe a few weeks or even a few months, you've been uh, doing yoga every morning and you're like, yes, I'm on my way to being a yogi now. <laughs> and then after three months, you say, well, I've been doing pretty good. It doesn't matter if I skip a few days and then you fall off track and then you bounce back to where your set point was beforehand and then you're back where you were in a way. I mean, it gets easier every time you try, but the body's trying to keep you back where you were at of what was easiest. So this is a huge obstacle when trying to improve, but being aware of it helps us to remember we need to use a little willpower. We need to have a little inner strength and say, you know, even though it would be easy to just do the same thing and tell myself I'll start tomorrow like I always do, I'm going to actually do what I said I was going to do. And I'm actually going to change. And I'm actually going to achieve my goals. And then you'll be able to incrementally, over time, improve yourself. And there will always be this tendency to snap back because of homeostasis, but over time, through a little effort, you can change who you are and become a better version of yourself and become a more actualized, open-minded, conscious, <laughs> enlightened version of yourself. So these are some of the obstacles that we face when trying to achieve our goals or trying to improve. And just being aware of them can help us to think about it and be conscious of it. Because when we're conscious of it, then we know what's going on. Instead of just falling back into our habits because that's what's easy, we watch ourselves doing it. And then we have the option to choose. And you need to have a strength of will to choose to do better or choose to do something different or choose to change. But you have that within you. 
you are just as capable as you believe you are. And you really can achieve whatever you believe that you can achieve. And you don't need to limit yourself with limiting beliefs like you can't or you're going to fail. So a quote that I will leave you all with that I really like goes something like, a master has failed more times than a novice has even tried. So if you're afraid to fail and that's why you're not pursuing your goals and achieving them, just remember that failure is actually a success. It is part of your growth process. It is part of you changing and getting there. You're not just gonna jump from being at this point and then all of a sudden you're all the way up here. It's a process and you're gonna stumble and fall along the way down. I mean along the way up. You're gonna stumble and fall down on your way up. That's just part of it. It's okay. And some things may be easier to improve at than others, but you're not gonna instantly achieve your highest ideal and be perfect. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Feeling pretty good. I hope you're all feeling pretty good as well. Go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos. And uh, much love to all my ally, ally, allies out there. And I hope to see you soon on the next video. Thank you.